Hello, welcome to another ZBrush quick tip with me, Joe Harford. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make bullet holes, create custom brushes and with their own custom icons. And then we're going to add them to a brush and alpha library so you can have quick access to them in future. So let's take a look at some bullet hole reference. Uh, first thing of note is a big hole in the middle where the bullet's gone in and then a damaged section fading off around it uh, but with a flat wall. So we we'll start off by going to the ZBrush objects and choosing a plain 3D and drawing that out on our canvas. If we go to Make Polymesh 3D, that'll make it editable and we can start sculpting on it. So I'm having a look at the, uh, the polyframe here to see what kind of density levels that we're going to need. Uh, I'll just put a basic material on it so it makes it a little easier to see the sculpting. And then I'll subdivide it a few times to get uh, enough density to retain good detail in our bullet hole. So I'm going to start off by drawing out a rough outline of where the, the bullet's gone in, the, the fall off area. And we'll, uh, we'll refine that a little bit by sharpening the mask. So I'm just adding little bits of masking here and there uh, just to match the rough outline of where I want my bullet hole to be. So let's keep refining that and then I'll invert the mask and I'll drag it back using the transpose tool. So I've created some depth and uh, I've gone in there with a the smooth tool keeping the mask selected and smoothed out that transition between the indentation and the, the wall. So now I've got this soft fall off uh, I use the same technique to just drop the, the actual bullet hole back. So I've got two uh, main indentations now, one which is the, uh, the fall off and one the bullet hole. Uh, using trim adaptive, I've, I've just trimmed that uh, the sides back from where it got extruded a little too much. And I'm using now a mixture between trim adaptive and uh, H polish to just polish the surface of this bullet hole and create all these nice little uh, rocky sections of where the, the concrete's been damaged. I've also created a little noise brush just simply by selecting one of the circular brushes and then applying, uh, instead of stroke, I'm using spray as the brush painting method. Uh, and by altering the size of that, I can uh, modify between large and very small detail, which just helps me get uh, a good uh, base to work my H polish on and to add very very fine detail to uh, to the bullet hole and make it look a little bit more realistic rather than having smooth uh, smooth surfaces that um, can often look pretty pretty uh, generic and CG. So now, now I've done that I've got my bullet hole complete and I want to grab this and use it as an alpha. So I'm going to go up to the brush uh, the document panel and change my width and height to something square. So let's say two, 2048 by 2048. So Zebra shall ask me if I want to crop and, and do this and I'll have to redrop the, the model on the canvas. So uh, so now I set that up and if I click on AA half I can see the whole of my canvas and I'll draw out my plain 3D and I'll make sure that it fills the entire canvas and uh, does the small smooth edges that where were created from dividing this as I've zoomed in a little further than that. So if we go up to our alpha palette and click on transfer and then click on grab dock, that'll create an alpha of the object we've got in our canvas from the camera's perspective, which is here it's top down, making sure we're in orthographic mode. Now, if I export that as uh, bullet holes 01, I've put it into my Z alphas directory, which is in the Pixelogic uh, in program files. Now that'll load up in Lightbox when I want to use it next in its own folder called bullet holes. So I'm going to create a cylinder now so we can see how our bullet hole looks on a proper object. So I've drawn that out on the canvas and I've gone back to full screen mode and I'm going to subdivide that up a few times, maybe five times to get a nice lot of detail in there and then make that a polymesh 3D so it's editable. 
Now if I just draw out my alpha straight onto my object, you can see it's too light and it's not deep enough. So I have a couple of options here. One is to change the Z intensity up to something like 50. And I can also change the focal depth to uh, minus 100 to, to make sure that my entire alpha is being drawn with no radial fading. But I do actually want a little bit of radial fade in this case. So I'm going to go up to the alphas uh, palette. And I'm going to go to modify and change the mid, intent, mid value. Uh, and I'm going to experiment with this. And you'll have to experiment uh, depending on your uh, light and darks and what your mid value is. In this case, the mid value is white. So I'm going to put that at 100. I've also given it a little bit of radial fade and maybe the value of three. So uh, draw that out onto our canvas now and there's no horrible borders around it. It's just, it's just our bullet hole, uh, pretty much identical to how we had it on our plane. So draw a few of those out on, see how it looks. Uh, it can draw it out on the side of the, um, the edge as well, it looks, it looks quite good. And you can see from the side views, it's, it's got a nice uh, lot of depth to it. And I can just start drawing these out. Now here's something really cool. Uh, if, if I play with the intensity value, I can actually create uh, smaller bullet holes with, with less fall off. And really start to get a lot of variation in there. Put a few little pop marks in there as well. And we can build up a wall without changing uh, our, our alpha whatsoever. And we can have a lot of variation and, and uh, versatility just from this one brush we've created. So let's have a look at uh, where we've saved this. You'll see if we open up the light box by pressing the comma and go into alpha and then our bullet holes directory, there's our alpha. And any time that we want to use that on any brush, we can just pull that up, double click on that, and it'll come in as uh, that brush is alpha. But I, I want to save this as uh, an actual brush now. So I've drawn a, a brush out now uh, on my sphere. Nice and large, so I've got a good representation of it. So when we create this icon, we can actually see it in the brush um, in the brush menu. Uh, if it's too small, then all the detail will just be lost and you won't know what you're doing. So I've uh, kept the canvas square and enlarged it, the sphere to fill it. And I'm going to make the background black because then it'll remain transparent in the brush menu. So I want to select my uh, icon by going to brush select icon and select the PSD that we just exported. Now, if I go to save brush here, I uh, go to save as, and then make it into the uh, Pixelogic directory, ZBrush, uh, ZBrushes, and then a new bullet holes uh, folder, and uh, call it bullet holes 01, and then navigate to it in the light box, and you'll see it under bullet holes, and there's a nice little icon for it, and we can select that anytime we want, and draw it out onto any object that we might want to destroy. Okay, I hope you find that useful. If you've got any questions, always uh, drop, a, drop a message, and uh, see you next time.